Hello Zero K fans and welcome to this exhibition match. It's going to be a bit of a change up from my normal way of doing things. We're going to have a 3v3 now. Now bear in mind I don't do team matches often. I'm primarily focused on 1v1s but apparently this is actually a really skilled team match and given the elo values of the players involved I totally believe that. So let's just get that started then. So we have in the southeast corner of the map, Ivory King, Skazi, and Fred. Starting out, Skazi very quickly going for vehicles, while Fred goes for Aerial Factory, and Ivory King has not chosen a factory yet. Oh, going for Kolkibot. Okay. And in the northwest corner of the map, Sabir, Forever, and Sheep. Sabir going for vehicles, Sheep going for shields, and... Actually, no. Forever going for shields. Sheep, not certain. They have been apparently trying to figure out who's going to go air, if any of these going to go air or gunships to force AA being built by Team Blue. But for now, I will mostly refer to as Team Blue and Team Red. So by Team Blue, it's going to be a slight advantage for them, at least in the air. I think Team Red... Okay, Team Red does have some defenders up. They have Sheep and Forever each have a defender up, and Sabir does not... There is another defense structure I'm not missing. He is getting... Okay, Sabir is getting a Lotus... So, okay, it's two defenders from Sheep, that's what it is. And Sheep is going for an airplane plant. So Team Blue has seen what Team Red is up to. Getting rid of the scout there, and similarly, Team Red is just about to see what Team Blue is up to, though they have a much larger raiding force. Four Scorchers coming in to the southwest, well, same time, some air being built for Team Red. Now, Team Red does have a much better position for dealing some damage, but Team Blue... Realistically, come down to commander defense. It looks like Team Red's actually gonna get rid of Ivory King's, or should I say specifically, that Sabir's gonna about. Looks like he's on trying to get rid of Ivory King's commander within the first couple minutes of the game, and. Yes, getting rid of Ivory King's commander by basically a minute into the game. That is. That is huge. Now, Sabir right now has, well, the lowest energy other than Ivory King, and Ivory King has, I don't think, has upgraded his. Sorry, not Sabir. That was... What am I saying? Ivory King was the guy who just lost his calm. Ivory King has the lowest energy as a possible result. He hadn't actually morphed his calm yet. So it wasn't a huge loss. Pointing out Sabir just because he also has low energy. He has also not morphed his calm. At this point, Sheep... No, Sheep is focused entirely on Solars. Forever, on the other hand, he has morphed his calm. He is going Beam Laser Energy Cell on an Economy Commander. And Fred... Continue to try to harass, trying to scout out. Not really doing too much by harassment, just double checking what's going on. While Ivor King trying to expand, or sorry, Fred trying to expand. Ivor King's just trying to protect that expansion. Fred continuing to get expansions. Ivor King, sorry, that's not Fred. That's Skazi going to get expansions. Fred's also getting some expansions built on the south side of the map while reclaiming. Sorry, Ivor King reclaiming his commander. Fred building up his. Power infrastructure to the southwest, and Skazi aggressively expanding, setting up some Scorchers, sorry, some Slashers to deal with this, just in case the Scorchers do come in. Those Scorchers aren't forthcoming. Instead, we do see that Bandits are forthcoming, which the Rockos are actually able to chase off, surprisingly. Bandits are being raiders. They're fairly effective against Skirmishers, but it's not something that Forever wants to engage in. And Sheep is going, looks like he's trying to go around the side to engage the side with his Avengers, but he's not actually going for that too hard. And one of the defenders going down forever, losing a defender at the front. Not a big deal. Able to get rid of one of the Rockos in the process with his bandits. And Skazi just sitting with his Avengers around, just on patrol, just in case these vamps come in to try to deal with anything. Though the vamps, I'm pretty sure they will have an advantage on those Avengers. And Slasher fight starting out in the center of the map. We see thugs are actually able to get a bit more leeway into them than the Rockos are. And Napalm Bomber coming to finish it off. Those Slashers are out. One of them still left, but the thugs will finish it off before it's a big deal. So Skazi needs to retreat. Now, at the same time, we see that Sabir is expanding as well to the south. And Forever and Skazi are really the ones taking the aggressive expansions in the center. They're the ones focusing on maintaining map control. Though Sabir is doing a great job helping out with the Slashers. Right now, Sheep is mostly worried about air control. He's not worried about the ground control. As is Fred. Though Fred's much more focused on the expensive vamps, and now getting some Napalm Bombers. Getting some Phoenixes. Probably going to try to use them to get rid of the Slashers as well. Just try to get some revenge on that for the Slashers that were destroyed by Sheep's 
Napalm Bomber and the Phoenix Sheep's Phoenix coming around for another pass. It looks like it's not actually going to continue along. Those Slashers were in position. They would have destroyed it. Slashers being the only unit in the game that actually has to stop to fire. It's very important that if you attack them, they aren't firing on you. And nicely done, nearly getting rid of half a dozen Slashers with that Phoenix. And another Phoenix as well trying to get revenge on these Slashers over here. On severe Slashers. And it looks like Skazi actually not ultimately losing his Slashers. Sabir, on the other hand... No, actually, Severe saving his Slashers as well. Though, Rocco's are doing what they can to get rid of that. And a Roach, nicely placed, or decently placed Roach. It doesn't look like that much died. A couple Rock, a Rector and a Rocco. Not bad, but for a Roach, that's kind of breaking even. And Air Fight starting out in the southwest corner of the map. We don't have much there. Sheep not committing to that. Very good idea. The Avengers probably wouldn't be able to get rid of all those vamps. But he knows that... Fred is going entirely for vamps. He knows that he's not going for any Avengers of his own. And another Napalm Bomber Strike to try to get rid of the Slashers. And it looks like the Slashers will not make the Phoenix pay for what it did. Dominatrix coming up. Okay, this is big. This Dominatrix is what we want to look at for Skazi. Because that is able to take over any unit it comes in contact with. It takes a little while, but it will take it over. Though it only took a dirt bag. Not a big deal. That was a bit of a scout, but other than that, not that useful. Tick coming in from, that would be Skazi, I believe. Or, sorry, it's Ivory King. Getting two ticks in to get rid of the Ravagers that were sending from Sabir. This is where most of the action is going on. Fairly large fight to the Southwest, and it looks like this isn't that big of a deal. Neither players are, or neither team is getting too much ground as a result of this. Though a Ravager being converted, but killed soon after. No, not killed soon after. Blocked off by the wreckage of its old fellow. So that Raptor able to get out alive, thanks to the wreckage blocking this, these slasher missiles. Though the slashers are able to deal a lot of damage. Severe slash is able to get rid of Magura Skazi slashes with Skazi. No, sorry, Ivory King coming in with his glaives, trying to get rid of Severe's commander, but Severe's commander is doing too well. And the air fight looks like it is supposed to be. No, okay, at this point, Sheep has gotten a lot more vamps, and it looks like he is going to be. Possibly winning this. It's a little hard to follow the dogfights, unfortunately. One of the vamps has gone down. No, two of the vamps have gone down for... Actually, it looks like all of Fred's vamps have gone down. So that is entirely Sheep's game now in the air. So Fred is still getting more vamps. He doesn't have any on the field right now. He has a couple of phoenixes. And that's about, however, at the same time, see that Team Blue is pushing in the southwest side of the map. And they are starting to harass out these... Expansions here, so it looks like Team Blue is actually a little bit advantageous for metal. Now, Forever actually has the most metal of anyone in the game, but that's not to be the same to be said for the rest of his team. The rest of his team is actually not doing too great. So overall, I'd say that it's fairly even, but Team Blue does have a slight advantage in its position. They have taken out, well, it's actually taken a bit more map control along the west side of the map. Definitely made this a no man's land area, and Ravager's trying to get him to harass, losing one, losing probably two. And these Phoenixes will be finishing off the Ravagers. Now at the same time, Forever has been doing a lot to... Con and will that take out the Ravagers? I believe it, it takes out one of them, at least, I'm sure. And there we go, the Ravagers are marching to their doom, trying to deal with damage they can. Anyway, Forever is... What to after that? Looks like this tick is not gonna bother. Doesn't need to. The Ravager will be going down too quickly for that to matter. And, like I said, Forever definitely trying to consolidate the center of the map. And also trying to make sure that you can get the northeast corner of the map. But Fred doing... Sorry, Ivory King doing a great job stopping that from happening. And Fred nicely taking the southwest corner of the map. And making sure they have it defended enough so that none of the vamps or avengers that Sheep is sending in will actually be able to deal any damage to it. Or at least they'll have a hard time dealing damage to it. More Napalm Bombers going to the center of the map trying to get rid of these Slashers. And these slashers are going down very quickly. Skazi is throwing them all to their deaths. They aren't actually dealing any damage to the air units, which really that's the air he anti-air he has right now is the slashers. So because they aren't actually dealing any damage to the air, that's not a total waste. I mean slashers aren't dedicated anti-air. There is a dedicated anti-air vehicle that is not anything being used, but down goes Skazi's commander, and Skazi's commander on the other end had actually been leveled up. That was an energy cell commander. So Skazi losing energy. At this point, Ivory King and Skazi have lost their commanders, and none of Team Red's commanders have gone down. 
But at the same time, and Team Red actually does have the air battle. They have the air battle basically won. Team Blue trying to get out of this, trying to get in a position where they can actually win from here. But not a whole lot's going on that'll help them out much. I mean, it's not close enough for defense to actually really matter. Actually, it slightly is getting a bit close to defense, and it looks like one of the vamps has been destroyed for Team Red. But same with Team Blue, but Team Red has lost, Sheep has lost all of his vamps. One of which going off into oblivion because vamps don't actually care about gravity. They just sort of go. But that's beside the point. The point is that Team Blue is still holding on to the ground fight. They have, however, lost the commander fight, and unless they can start harassing enemy commanders, that's not going to work well for them. That being said, commanders aren't that important. They are important, but you can live without them. However, what can't easily be lived without is economy, and at this point, Team Blue... Well, Skazi, it looks like he's reclaiming his way up to a pretty decent economy. And Team Red basically has about 30 metal between them. Team Blue's got a little bit more than that. They have close to 40. It's not the biggest advantage, but it could still come up. It could still matter, especially since Team Blue is starting to harass the southwest side of the map, getting rid of Sabir's expansion over the southwest side of the map. No one's really coming to defend that. Sabir just setting up some vehicles just to prepare once that expansion destruction force has come through. While, at the same time, Forever is harassing on the east side of the map, but about to lose these units to a Napalm Bomber. Or at least take a bunch of damage from these units to a Napalm Bomber, and that will get rid of at least one of the bandits. And a slasher coming in, a bunch of slashers coming in to clean this up. That is going to be very difficult to deal with. And it looks like there is... Huh, weird. Anyway, it looks like there is going to be probably the fight of the match over here, the west side of the map, and it looks like at this point... Actually, Team Red is trying to avoid it, but they have... A tick has come in, stunning three of the Raptors. Half the Raptors are out of the fight. At least for the next six seconds or so, they are out of the fight. The rest of the Raptors coming in are going to be dealing a fair amount of damage. Oh, why do I have selection circles on? Okay, anyway, i got to fix that for next... Anyway, my point is, looks like Team Red is going to be able to push through. Nice defense from Team Blue trying to get rid of this, but looks like the Red Team is going to have no big problem pushing through here. And a Dominatrix does have a captured thug trying to get rid of a bandit, trying to get his former friend bandit, but looks like it's not going to work out. However, that Dominatrix really hasn't captured a whole lot, honestly. It's... the real asset, the real thing that Skazi has brought to this game has been the slashers. That's the main thing he's done, and he is trying to do what he can with these rogues, but really the slashers are what he has. That's what's been holding Team Blue in this game, is just the fact that these slashers have not really died much, and they've been very effective at keeping everything else at bay, while Sabir's been focusing entirely on Ravagers instead. And Ravagers are definitely the spam unit of the Light Vehicle Factory. However, being grouped up, unfortunately, lose, well, taking a fair amount of damage on three of them. Still, this is starting to become a critical mass. I think Sabir basically has this. He just needs to march through with these Ravagers. Now, looks like Skazi doesn't have any of his slashes in position. He is probably going to try to take some of these Ravagers if he can. And definitely probably going to try to get that... Well, sorry, I should say... Fred is going to try to get this Napalm Bomber in to deal some damage. I don't think he has set that up yet, though. But he probably will fairly soon. Because that's their best bet right now, is that Napalm Bomber. Some Ravagers are coming in for Fred, along with the Slashers. But those Slashers really aren't doing a whole lot. Just sitting there. Okay, now that one of the Slashers is coming into position, getting rid of some of the Ravagers, and the Napalm Bomber did come in, deal some damage as well. And nice, getting rid of the Napalm Bomber coming in from Sheep. That is really going to help, though. It looks like that Napalm Bomber still managed to deal some damage. Still managed to get in, and Ticks finishing the job so the Ravagers can just clean up, or should say, Fred's Ravagers can clean up Severe's Ravagers, no problem. And that is going to be that part of the match. And Dominatrix is finishing off the last two Ravagers. So Team Blue actually getting a bit of an advantage. They're starting to snowball, though forever reclaiming a lot of metal, as a Severe, well, Severe was reclaiming a lot of metal. He still sort of is. It looks like... At this point, none of the players are really escalating too much. There is a gunship plant from Forever. He's going to start escalating that, while for Team Blue, nothing has really changed. They're staying with their original factories. They do have some caretakers set up, or at least Skazi has caretakers set up, which is how he's getting those slashes and ravagers up so fast. 
but looks like same for Sabir, actually. Both vehicle players do have their caretakers going. And I can't say I blame them. The vehicles are definitely the ones winning this match. Titan Duel is definitely a very vehicle-heavy map. It's, as you can see, very flat. As a result, it's a map where vehicles are going to be extremely important, rather than a map where, say, bots are going to be quite so powerful due to its size and due to its flatness. Vehicles are definitely the way to go. Now, air units in a team match are pretty typical. You often get one air player in a team match. I'm a bit surprised that both Skazi, I'm sorry, both Cheap and Forever are going for air. Skazi's not going for air. He's continuing along with his vehicles. But as Fresh Cheap and Forever are both going for air. Mind you, Forever is going a bit more for gunships. Not quite the same thing, just in terms of their mobility, but still, at this point, I'm a little bit surprised. The air game hasn't entirely been won by either player. At this point, I mean, it looked like Team Red was getting air control, but Fred has managed to hold them off a bit. He's getting enough vamps, he's gotten in good position, he's forced the battles to be near the defenders, and that is pretty big. Well, it looks like Skazi is coming along the northeast side of the map and taking out what he can. That is going to be a fairly powerful attack there in the northeast. So Forever losing a lot of his metal, and it looks like... I think Team 1, are they... They are voting to resign. That is... I guess it'd be the red team. That is not entirely surprising at this point. Looks like they aren't quite committed to resigning. They're still... Most of the stone to stay in and probably forever is the one voting to resign because he did lose a lot of units just there. Lost his economy pretty majorly right there. But I'm not sure who started that. And it looks like a roach coming in to get rid of some of the vehicles. Quite a few of the vehicles that had been sent out. Actually... Oh, great. I feel like I'm... I'm okay, that was dumb. I missed a Roche go off, but it doesn't matter. Team Red has surrendered. Sheesh. That was... That was quite a game there. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll be back with another shortly. It will be a 1v1, not quite so hectic as this one was. But I hope you enjoyed this anyway, and stay tuned.